So I literally, just, almost literally, just got in the door from New York City. It took me two days to get back. It should have been two hours. Uh, the complete train wreck uh, getting back here to Wisconsin. But I watched the women's semifinals this past Thursday. So I saw um, Muchova versus Goff. And then I saw Sabalenka versus Madison Keys. And the Coco Goff versus Muchova match was amazing. It was extremely instructional, extremely insightful. And if you haven't watched it, I strongly recommend you watch it. Here's my six biggest takeaways from that match. Just for context, I was sitting kind of in the, the corner of the baseline, uh, but, but facing forwards. So behind the baseline and six rows up from the court. Student hooked me up with, with seats. It was amazing. So from that perspective, the, the game, if you've never watched professional tennis from, from that close and from that angle, from that perspective, it's incredibly insightful and much more impactful. I really get a feel and a sense for everything that's happening much, much more than watching on TV or even watching in person and kind of watching up high and looking down at the court or looking at the side of the court and watching the ball go back and forth. So Coco Goff reeled things back, played very smart, played very savvy. And I'm going to give you some insights here. Six different things. Number one, uh, your best chance to win isn't always your best shot. What I mean by that is Muchova is a, like a, a big hitter, a strike-first kind of player. She likes pace. She likes uh, tempo. And Coco was not giving it to her. And out of the gate, it almost kind of looked like, like Coco was just not playing well. But after a couple games, it became apparent that the changes in height and speed and spin and direction, which we'll talk about in a second, was really purposeful. And Muchova was having a hard time finding her rhythm and finding her timing and finding some tempo. And you've dealt with this. Anybody who plays tennis has dealt with this. Receiving kind of a nothing ball and trying to send back a lot of pace and a lot of power and direction is really challenging, swing after swing. So could, ha could Coco have gone out there and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe and just had a bash fest with Muchova and maybe beat her? It's probably possible. Yeah, she probably has like the talent and the skill to do that. But just because she could do that, does that mean that it's the tactically intelligent decision? And if there's some other plan outside of Coco's maybe plan A that would be more effective, would that be better? And the answer is absolutely yes. And so it's tempting as tennis players to feel like, well, my best shot, in, in other words, like the hardest I can hit, the closest the lines I can hit, the most spin, the most top spin I can hit, that's my best shot. And so that's my best game. And so that must be my best chance of winning. And a lot of times the answer is absolutely not. It's not my best chance of winning. You have to be intelligent about the strengths and weaknesses of the player on the other side of the net. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, just because you can hit hard, this is connected, just because you can hit the ball hard doesn't mean that you should. Doesn't mean that it's intelligent. Doesn't mean that it's gonna give you the best chance of winning. It was obvious sitting from my perspective so close to the court that A, Coco Goff is an amazing athlete. B, she has like virtually unlimited potential to swing the racket, accelerate the racket, hit the ball hard. But C, it was obvious that she was choosing not to use her potential. It was obvious that she was not swinging very hard. Uh, she wasn't trying to hit the ball very impressively or with a lot of force. And like swing after swing, seeing her be very measured and very disciplined and very controlled about the tempo she was giving Muchova on the other side was just, I was so imp impressed by it. Seeing this like elite athlete be very measured and not careful. Like she, she was obviously still hitting a good shot, but just good enough that Muchova could not take over points just good enough that Muchova didn't have the opportunity to just like, you know, just tee off and just hit winners. So just because you can hit the ball hard doesn't mean that it's the smartest play. And I thought this was just a really good example of that. Number three, changing directions, meaning like taking a cross court ball and going down the line does not have to be a laser. It does not have to be one inch over the net, it does not have to be a foot inside the lines. And Coco did a ton of this where Muchova hit a cross-court forehand, 
Coco, instead of rallying with her and hitting like a solid shot back cross court, would go down the line, but would do it with a bunch of height and take some pace off, add a bunch of topspin, and hit it like five or six or seven feet inside the lines. So changing direction, and the reason why she was doing this became pretty clear by the end of the match that she felt like Muchova's backhand was going to break down. Frequently it did in key moments, and so she was trying to give her lots and lots of backhands. But I think us normal players a lot of times feel like, well, if I'm going to receive a cross-court shot and hit it down the line, it's got like this is like the green light, and I'm just going for it. And she, this, this match was a fantastic case study of you can change direction, you can pick a different pattern, you can pick on your opponent's weakness without having to bash the ball and try to hit a winner just because you're changing direction. You can be much more intelligent about it and uh, more measured and disciplined about it. And Coco did it really well. Okay, I'm going to combine number four and five because I can tell this is just kind of getting long. Number four is changing heights leads to dis discomfort. And number five is changing spins leads to discomfort. Uh, Coco hit a lot of what at a professional level would definitely be considered a moon ball. Heavy spin, lots of height, not a lot of pace, deep in the courts. I mean, at least 10 feet over the net, maybe 10 to 15 feet over the net, really high, really loopy, not a lot of pace. And then she would throw in like some slices, again, targeting the backhand side of Muchova. So when you're constantly like having to switch between high contact on a moon ball and medium contact, but not a lot of pace for kind of just like a rolling, you know, kind of neutral like rally ball and then bending down low for like a low short slice, which Coco was throwing in like forehand slices. She was hitting backhand slices to the backhand side. Again, taking away the tempo, taking away the rhythm of Muchova led to a lot of mistakes on the backhand side and just put a lot of pressure on her in general to have to keep trying to hit it again and again and again while Coco is mixing up the heights and, and spins. Okay, and finally, number six, stick to the plan. So Coco had the opportunity to finish the match at, I believe it was 5-4 in the second set. And instead of sitting back and sticking with the different heights, different speeds, going to the backhand, she all, she all of a sudden, you could tell, like got excited and started like charging into the net. And not like serving volley, but she'd get like uh, an okay ball from Muchova. And instead of sticking with the the consistent, steady, change-up kind of shots, she would pound it and immediately come in behind it to try to finish it. And she had she had two match points where she did that at 5-4. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was. And Muchova passed her both times and ended up breaking her. It got to 5-5. Five, five. And then at 6-5, Coco had match points again. And I was like, oh, man, is she going to jump the gun? Is she going to get antsy again? Or is she going to stick with the plan? And this time she stuck with the plan, and that's when she won uh, the match, 7-5, in the, the second set. So overall, I, this was like a, just an incredible case study of, in my opinion, Coco Goff being very disciplined, very measured, very intelligent, mixing things up for all those six reasons. If you haven't watched it, I really recommend you do. These are all things all of us should be doing and learning from. So hopefully there's something in there that gave you some ideas. Really enjoyed myself uh, at the Open very much. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again next time.